ISO FileMaker Magazine, the professional's resource for FileMaker know-how. Hey there, this is Matt Petrowski for ISO FileMaker Magazine, helping you learn more about FileMaker Pro and developing. Can you get an app built in the iOS SDK for FileMaker on the App Store? Yes, you can. Let's take a look. All right, so thank you for joining me here at my desktop, and thank you for being, being willing to learn more about FileMaker Pro. If you have gotten into FileMaker and you are excited by the fact that you can actually release an app on Apple's App Store using FileMaker with what's known as the iOS SDK, then rest assured that it is possible. I'm going to show you. I always wondered myself, what does an app on the App Store built in FileMaker actually look like? Now, one thing I cannot give you in this video are precautions and things that you need to know about before you even attempt. There are absolutely some things, some related to security, some related to actually getting approved that you must know about. And this is outside of the fact that you have to be willing and comfortable in working with Xcode. And that's going to come with a lot of deep understanding, things that you need to know. Code signing is one thing in particular that can be the most frustrating thing about trying to get an app that you build in FileMaker up on the App Store. But what we're looking at on screen here is actually my own app. It's an app that I got onto the App Store. And I will advise this. I'll switch over to, this is the, the iPad layout um, of the iPad version, and then I also have a um, a the iPhone version. So as we go into browse mode, and I if I was to make this a little bit smaller, like an I, uh, iPhone, actually, let's go ahead and do that. There's the iPhone version right there. Now, a key thing to understand is when you're going to develop something for the App Store, you have to know that you need it needs to more or less feel like and work like an iOS app. So when I make this a little bit larger and say, for example, I click on this menu right here and up comes a menu that looks like an iOS menu, that is going to be something that is more appealing because it follows not exactly, but it more closely follows the design guidelines that Apple wants for its apps. In FileMaker, we don't have access to use the OS native design. Well, we can, but more or less, we're doing our design in FileMaker. So we want to emulate things such as this menu as much as possible. In fact, if you're interested in this particular menu, I recently shot a video and this menu was made available to my subscribers through the subscription service over at FileMakerMagazine.com. So um, shameless promotions aside, what we're interested in here, and if you do want to uh, take a look at this app, if you want to see this in action um, on your iOS device. Uh, let's switch over to Safari. Um, there we go. There, There's the name of the app. I believe if you go in the App Store and you search for the word Keepa Score, you will be able to come up with the app. You would be able to download it and take a look at uh, how it actually functions on um, an iOS device. It will work on both iPad and on the iPhone. But I'm going to give you some of my suggestions in here and cover some of the things that you need to be aware of before you even start to head down this path. And I'll have all these links, um, a link to the app and a link to the other pages that I'm going to reference here as we go throughout the rest of this video. Number one thing, um, Claris, because of how FileMaker Go was created and developed, Claris fortunately made it such that we are able to take advantage of the FileMaker platform and deploy this with our FileMaker files. Now, to that end, um, on this link right here on this Claris website where it talks about the iOS app uh, in, uh, SDK instructions. Is this, is this the one? No, it's not. Where is the, not the operating system? Here we go. Uh, again, all of these links are going to be down below the video underneath. You can access these three pages are probably some of the most important that I'm going to explain before you ever start out. And granted, you're going to be frustrated if you're going to use Xcode and you cannot figure out code signing. Um, in fact, if you are interested, leave a comment below. I'm considering creating a course that is specifically focused on all the things that I addressed at the outset of this video. Uh, security implications, 
um, developing with uh, Xcode, code signing, um, testing. Those four areas are really, really important if you're going to try to get on the App Store. But to that end, we have to pay attention to this right here on Claris's own page. This is the disclaimer that we need to know about that is why uh, Claris is not going to support you putting an app on the App Store. While it's technically possible, this is their policy. Claris does not recommend or support, so you're not going to get anything from Claris. And it is absolutely possible because Claris has made the iOS SDK available to anyone. It used to be part of the FileMaker developer program, but the reason that I'm shooting this video is it is generous. It is absolutely awesome that using FileMaker, you can actually get something on the App Store. But they do not support getting it on the App Store to distribute apps. And the reason for it is this. There is no data management method on FileMaker for you to manage persisting your user's data moving forward when it's local. FileMaker, or Claris in particular, is hoping that people will use FileMaker Go or the iOS SDK in order to wrap around your FileMaker solution so that it connects to a FileMaker database. Now you are able to do both within a FileMaker app. You can have and maintain local data and you can also maintain a connection to a remote server. And there is a very key way when you design an iOS SDK or a FileMaker Go application that's going to be wrapped in the SDK there's a very key way that you can do this and you can persist and move your user's data forward. But you have to know what you're doing. The key is you're going to be using a data separation model. The app and the way that the SDK deploys an app is very unique in the way that you need to make sure that your user's data is actually not part of the deployment model that the iOS SDK uses. So you have to become familiar with that. So since Claris does not support or recommend this, the next thing you need to know about moving forward is how far back of an iOS do you want to support? And if you, are, if you have not uh, downloaded it before, then you're going to need to download it. Uh, I don't know how you would get access to it, but the iOS SDK has been made available via FileMaker 18, 17, 16, all of those older versions, which were part of the developer program, you may not be able to get access to. So for example, if you wanted to support iOS 12, working on older iOS devices, you would need FileMaker 18 iOS SDK. It won't work. So the link that we're on right here our FileMaker Go's operating system requirements. Now, as of the shooting of this video, FileMaker Go, which is the free version of the iOS SDK, anything prior to FileMaker Go 19, you had to have been part of the developer program and have access to FileMaker Go uh, SDK 18 or 17. You're going to see what is actually supported. So we need to use this in order to understand what we can actually use. Now, FileMaker Go 19, this is telling us what it will connect to. But essentially, where is it right there? There we go right there. Uh, FileMaker Go is 19 is a minimum compatible with iOS 15. So you're not going to be able to get on older devices if you're running the SDK that uses version 19. But if we scroll down to 18, we are going to be able to see that on with FileMaker Go 18 SDK, which did require you to be part of the developer program and have previously downlo downloaded it, you will be able to go down to iOS 12.2. So those are the key takeaways that we need when we look at what we're going to deploy if you need those older device supports. Uh, of course, I think the penetration as of the writing of uh, or the recording of this video is from uh, iOS 15 is close to something like 90%. So the free SDK that you're going to have access to, you're going to be able to uh, deploy to most all iOS devices, which brings us to what we have right here. If you are interested in starting out, and this was this is without any guidance, which is where I would be uh, intent on creating a... Um, a video course about doing this and covering all the different aspects because it's it's very I'm not gonna, I'm going to be honest with you it's difficult especially if you have not worked with um, 
the Xcode SDK. If you want to do anything, for example, in my app, when it's loaded on an iPad, I do not have two different uh, orientations. I only support um, landscape mode, um, either upside down or right side up. The only way that you can do that in a um, iOS SDK app is with what's called a delegate. That is accessing iOS functionality in order to limit what FileMaker took away. Now, FileMaker did when we take a when we go into layout mode and we uh, right click, I believe here, go to layout setup, and we go to script triggers, and we go to um, this one right here on layout size change. This is the trigger that you would use when a user changes the orientation of a device and you switch from what I currently have, which is a landscape view, to a portrait view. That's when you can do a layout switch using that trigger. Now, if you don't want to support a particular view, the only way that you can do that is with a delegate within your actual iOS SDK in Xcode. So these are the things that are you have to be willing to learn and be able to get into in order to understand what's going on. So. Here we have this URL, again, down below in this video. And again, this is the iOS SDK is free for anyone to download, but basically these are your instructions right here. This page is going to tell you or give you rough instructions about what to do. Um, it will walk you through all of the steps right here. Download and install Xcode. It will give you all of the individual things, but here is my word of advice. This one was written a while ago. You can see that the images are actually older versions of Xcode. Xcode has changed, and as well, there are things that, that Claris themselves, because they make iOS SDK available for distribution through MDM and through Enterprise, not necessarily through the App Store, even though it's technically possible, there are things Again, they don't support it, so things that you don't know, such as strings that are privacy strings that are relate to when uh, your iOS uh, app is going to access the camera or it's going to access um, the user's photo library. You have to be able to change that string, and there is nothing within all of this documentation that tells you how to do that. So there's also a very critical thing in terms of how the iOS SDK deploys each time that the app actually starts or boots up. This is when you release the app from memory. When you go into iOS and you um, swipe up and then you can see everything and then you get rid of an application by swiping up to flush it out of memory, that's considered a restart. And this right here is something that happens is every time that the app boots up, you have to decide what's going to happen with your FileMaker file. Is it always going to be placed or replaced? Is it only going to happen when there's a version change and that's controlled within your Xcode app on a build version change or just once? These are the things that you have to coordinate and manage in conjunction with your data persistence implementation, which is going to be for me a data separation model where you have a UI file, which is part of the deployment of the app but your data persists as a separate file that the app itself doesn't even see. Your solution will know and be able to check that it's there and determine whether it wants to update it or not. But there's many, many other things that you have to be aware of in order to get your app on the App Store. But the short of this is it is possible to get an app up on the App Store as I have done. And again, you can download this, take a look if you want. Um, if you are looking for advisement or consulting with regards to this, um, I can advise you. I currently don't have a course available, but I wanted to put this video out there, one, to give you the hope and possibility, but to also warn you that you are going to have to learn a lot of individual things with regards to Xcode and getting things up and running. Um, there are things that you have to, I don't believe it is shown, is it shown here? Um, for example, where is it? Yes, uh, languages. In my particular case, my FileMaker app only works, uh, my database only supports English. 
But FileMaker supports many languages, Spanish, Swedish, um, Italian, all of the different things. So when you deploy your FileMaker application, it will say that it supports all of those languages even though your FileMaker database does not. So you have to know how to actually remove those translation files in order to make it such that the App Store lists that your language is only the one that's supported that you actually deploy with. So these are things that um, I can consult and advise on. If you want to, you can use the magazine website at filemakermagazine.com under the services tab um, to request um, a consultation. Otherwise, um, I'd be interested to know if you're interested in learning more of the details. It would probably be a, a more of a premium priced course, but I would absolutely give you all of the things that you need to know in order to get your app on the App Store in order to deploy it for use. So, as always, I would like to wish you much luck with your own FileMaker development, and until next time, happy FileMaking. We hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial, and we'd like to say thank you for your subscription and your support. If you're not already a subscriber, head on over to www.filemakermagazine.com slash subscribe for more information about the benefits of joining.